Okay, I think we're going to get started for today. <laughs> How's everyone doing? All right. All right. All right. Great. Okay. Um, did everybody get the attendance? Something passed around? Okay. Okay. Also, um, so the progress for success board for all the Dropbox, up, Dropbox uploads that we've done. We had a winner. Um, who had most of their uploads done? Just be sure to do that. Keep doing that this week, and don't wait. Don't wait till the last minute to upload everything. Um, so the winner is Team Three, and they get five dollar gift cards. You do get. So this is where everybody is at right now. So some teams don't even have their first assignment uploaded. So you want to check this out oh, at the end. Six. Team six should be up there somewhere. Well, I have both on there. I'll double check. But um, yeah, so we're still kind of behind because we should be right here. So just make sure you do that by next session. Before we get started, we're going to do a little game to go along with our session today on marketing. Okay, so this is just, um, can everybody see? Is it bright enough? Um, I'll do oh, the light. Thank you. Alright, so we're just going to do a little um, branding marketing quiz to see if you can identify the following brand. So, um, what does everyone think this is from? Mercedes. Mercedes. Yes. Yes. She's a tech. Okay. Mexico. Okay. 
Um, Alright, so those are just um, a lot of brands, logos that we're able to associate their companies with easily um, due to good marketing on their part and branding. So now we're going to move on to our session for today and Allison is going to introduce our guest speaker. Joining us today from Via Credit Union is Michelle Peterson, and she is their Director of Marketing. Um, so if you've seen anything Via, or if you know what Via Credit Union is already, you can thank this lady right here. So she'll be helping you dive into your business plans a little deeper um, and develop a rich marketing plan for your entrepreneurial idea. So let's welcome Michelle. And like when you see our logo, does everybody know what Via is? The credit union? Okay, good. <laughs> um, and so like our, our logo, um, you know, even people now, whenever they write the word VIA, they do VI and then um, they don't cross the A or they do all capital letters because of our logo. So, um, you know, hopefully with that, I think I see one of our student branch workers. You're one of our student branch workers, I thought so. Uh, so we do, we do have branches in Allen and Kindle too. But um, of course I love marketing. Um, I, I, my degree is in marketing. Um, I didn't know that I liked marketing because I thought that you had to be really creative and be able to, to draw and uh, I never really considered myself that way but uh, I do like to think creatively um, which one obviously is one thing that definitely has to set yourself apart as uh, marketing. So guys, when you guys are kind of thinking about your products um, you know whether it's a service or it's an actual physical product uh, you gotta kind of think of try to think outside the box. Um, I guess the biggest thing, what, what are your guys' products now, or your services? What are, you, what are some of your ideas that, does it look like everybody's uh, gone along completely? Does it, do people, know, groups know their, their products? Who wants to tell me what it is? <laughs> tell her she'll help you develop a marketing plan. With Team One, what are you guys doing? It's a combination security system slash the form. Okay, cool. Yeah? Apps. Apps? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah? An service. What was it? An errand service. Aaron service. Oh, I want to hire you. <laughs> is, our, is that another, you guys another group? Yes. We're a recording studio. Ooh, cool. Yeah? Physical therapy clinic. Physical therapy clinic. Okay, so you guys kind of sound like you have products and services, so this is, it's perfect. As I kind of go through the pre presentation, I'll try to think of um, maybe different ways and we can kind of talk about each each um, product or service. Uh, now, of course, if you have any questions throughout the time, just um, let me know. All right. So the definition of marketing according to Google is an uh, action or a business of promoting and selling a product or a service. So um, the biggest thing with marketing is you have to anticipate the, the demand. So for example, um, you know, with with marketing we obviously or with the via crediting we obviously have financial services so we know like coming up is going to be christmas uh what what do people do during christmas buy they buy things so you know you're going to probably be seeing uh increased ads um from retailers um, you know targeting people for christmas um you guys probably don't necessarily watch the cartoon network and all the kids um shows but i catch glimpses of it and they're definitely uh, increasing the number of toy commercials. All I hear all day is, mom, I want that, mom, I want that, mom, I want that. So obviously they're doing that intentionally, trying to get the kids' uh, Christmas lists built. Um, so obviously one thing that, um, that we try to do around Christmas time is to promote uh, a loan. So like, this is just an example of what we did a couple of years ago where we're, we're providing a 5.9% interest um, loan for 24 months. So if somebody's running short on cash, they can get a loan. Um, you know, obviously we, we try to promote our credit card convenience for when you're, you're out shopping. So we're trying to intentionally uh, market based on the consumer's uh, demands. Some other things, uh, you know, during Chris or vacations, you'll see increased airline commercials, you'll see increased um, hotel commercials. Like now you have this in mind, you'll probably be paying more attention to it. But obviously their, their um, intention is to, because tra traveling is when people do their Christmas, or in the summers when they do their traveling. So like this is just an example that we did one year um, trying to motivate people to use their Via Credit Union Visa during, when, during their vacations. So those are a couple examples. Um, also, um, you know, I can't just hang those posters in the branch and expect people to know about the products that we're trying to promote. So you have to 
think of the different avenues that you want to use when you're promoting too. So um, you have the mass medias, you know, like the newspapers, the billboards, the um, um, newspaper, radio, television, you have all those markets. You have to tap into each one of them or at least know what your targeted market is and know what they're, where, where they're at. Um, free things, social media, you can pay or use um, social media, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter to be able to market your product or service. Um, also, um, emails, you, you know, I'm sure you guys get plenty of emails for things whenever you go sign up for, um, when you're, you're checking out and they ask for your emails, you know, they're doing that so they can send you promotions. Uh, I know, like, does anybody sign up for like Kohl's or American Eagle or I don't know where you guys shop at. So you guys, <laughs> Bath and Body Works, yeah. Like what they do is they get your email address and then when they run specials, you know, you're, you, it's like too good to be true, right? Like, oh my gosh, if I, if I or they send you a coupon for, um, you know, a free traveler at Bath and Body. So obviously you're gonna wanna go in there, you're gonna get the free, the free product, but you're probably not gonna go in there just for the pre -pro free product, you're probably gonna buy something, something else is gonna catch your mind. Or at least that's what their strategy is. Um, and all, um, so, I mean, emailing um, back, you know, in snail mail days or whoever your targeted market it is, um, you know, targeted ma or actual mail, physical mail, they do do that still. Uh, the post office actually uh, wants you to use that. They're promoting um, directly to your door, which is a marketing campaign. Um, you guys can definitely look that up as part of your resources. It's a very inexpensive way. Um, pretty much you just provide um, like a postcard size mailing piece and then the um, postman whenever he is on his route he just goes ahead and throws that in with the mail. Uh, do you guys kind of know what I mean like um, like the Great Deals magazine. Do you guys get that at your house? It's like a magazine with a bunch of coupons in it. Well that's an example of something local where it just gets thrown in your mailbox and it's not addressed to you personally it's just something that gets thrown into your mail. So that's kind of what they're, they're, um, the post office is trying to encourage people to use. Um, so like I said, um, it's very important to use as many avenues as you can. This is just a cute little thing saying, um, this is exact, they know exactly who their targeted market is. Uh, so you know, with that, like the credit union, our targeted market, we know who it is. So we intentionally market to it. We want to market to young families. Um, we, because you know, we're interested in getting loans and uh, young families just starting out, they need car loans, they need uh, home loans. Um, young families, we want to start the children out with uh, a savings account and hopefully they keep the savings account and then they, they use this for their, their lifetime. So we make sure we t target at that. Um, you know, with the student branches I mentioned earlier, that's one reason we definitely have those in there. Uh, women make financial decisions in the, in the world or in, at least in the uni United States. So we try to target a little bit more towards women than we do men. So whenever, with that being said, I know who Via Credit Union's target market is. So when I get donation requests or opportunities for advertising, I always have that in the back of my, my mind. Um, you know, we've, the Senior Center is an example of something locally where, you know, there's, they, they obviously are in need of money. So, you know, we obviously want to support the Senior Centers. It's a big portion of the community, but we're not going to put all of our money into that resource because that's, like I mentioned, is not our targeted market. So your targeted market is going to be who would use your product. So um, somebody had um, the, an errand service. So who do you think your target market is? Uh, people too busy to go out buy things. Uh, elderly who um, can't drive or don't want to. Um, uh, other people that just can't do it. Yeah. So you have, you've kind of thought through of who you're going to try to market to. Um, the biggest thing to remember is that you guys cannot be everything to everyone. So you can't just take your product and expect it to market it to a broad, broad base because, you know, people your age probably aren't going to want to get errand service. First of all, I mean, you probably would like for someone to do your errands, but do you have the money to pay for it? You know, do you have the, the extra income to be able to hire somebody to um, run your errands? You know, mate, you probably, probably don't. Um, and you know the elderly you know they have a little bit more time on their hands so you think well they may not need that service but you made a good point that they may not be able to physically get out and do the errands 
uh, I'm probably your prime market. I'm a full-time working working uh, parent who you know is involved in the community. So you know, I I very dislike grocery shopping <laughs> because it's a waste of my time. But I still have to have food. <laughs> um, so obviously, knowing knowing who your who your targeted market is. Also, you want to know who your competition is because um, you know you want to be able to to know how to to market your strategy that way. So, um, you know, we were kind of talking about restaurants a little bit beforehand. So, like, um, if you think about Moe's and Cadoba, like in Muncie, there's two of them. There's, or there's both restaurants. So, you know, why does, why does some people go to Moe's versus Cadoba? Well, when you think about Moe's, um, you know, they maybe are marketing to maybe the younger generation with their exciting, welcome to Moe's when you walk in the door or um, you know, the, the music that they play or um, you know, the artwork that they have in the restaurant versus Cadoba that is maybe a little bit more um, uh, like not as fun, <laughs> a little bit more stuffy, but or you know, traditional. Uh, you know, they don't have the the wild colors. They don't have you know, they have a little bit more of a, a mute thing. Um, their prices are a little bit higher. Um, you know, they do provide all natural or er, um, fresh ingredients. You know, like Moe's, um, but you know, I I think I've heard that they they don't do the. Um, MSG. So, I mean, I'm not here to market those, but I'm just trying to give you an example of, you know, whenever Moe's, you know, came into town, when Cadoba was already there, they had to have their niche. And they had to know, do we have a market here? Well, in Muncie, for example, that's a college student. They don't have very much money. They are young, so they probably like the fun, bright colors and um, the louder music. So, like I said, know who your competition is. Also, another thing to think of is um, what would the community lose if your if your business didn't exist? So, um, you know, like the um, what did you say your your business was? I thought I thought oh they don't have it in here physical, physical therapy. therapy. So you know there isn't as many physical therapy services. You know, there definitely isn't an errand service. What was your guys's recording studio. recording studio? There's definitely not a recording studio that I know of besides the radio station. So you know how how is the community functioning without that, these services right now? You know. Obviously, we're getting by, but is it is there a demand for it? And what would happen if you would leave? Um, so, like for example, um, with the, with your targeted market, when you think about um, you know like cereal boxes, like when you think about when you're you go down the aisle for cereal, what what like what's your favorite cereal? Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. All right. Anybody else? Um, Fruity Pebbles. Uh, Captain Crunch with berries. Captain Crunch with berries. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so obviously those are good cereals that aren't necessarily healthy for you, but they still have. Well, they do still have like the how however many um, min uh, vitamins and minerals. So and like when you think about the ones that were just mentioned, think about the boxes, bright colors, characters. Um, you know they're targeting to the to the to the kids, right? You guys are still kids. You're under 18, right? You're not a kid anymore, though. <laughs> but you can still like good cereal. So, you know, obviously they're, that, they know who their target market. On the back of the boxes, there's, you know, some kind of maybe giveaway for sports equipment or, um, you know, something that the, that the child is interested in. Um, but they also have to, know, they know who's buying it. The kid's not buying it. You guys aren't buying it. Your family's buying it. So then that's why they have to incorporate that, how many vitamins and minerals it is, and that it still has whole grain in it. So you'll think of that, think of that being on the box as well. Um, you know, versus um, maybe Fiber One or, I mean, Cheerios, I guess, you know, everyone kind of likes Cheerios, but it's still definitely not targeted to someone. Uh, Raisin Brand, if you think about some of those, who are they trying to target? Older people, some like more health conscious that they're you know wanting to eat healthier. Um, so obviously, like I said, just you know a little bit different. So the next time you guys go down the, the cereal aisle, check that out. So you'll and kind of point out, think of who they're trying to target. So there are uh, four P's in marketing. There's uh, the product that you're selling, uh, the price, the place where you're selling it, and then how you're promoting it. So we're going to kind of cover cover each one of these. Um, like this is just gonna what it, what it's gonna kind of do is just gonna kind of help you guys to put a strategy together for whenever you're trying to to market your product. Um, so we're gonna go a little bit more, like I said, a little bit more into detail. Um, the product that you sell, um, 
you know, developing, uh, de developing the product is one thing, but then how you pack it, package it is another thing. Um, also, how you, how you um, present it as far as, you know, the logo that you use. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, like our logo, I am, I am a stickler and everyone at the credit union knows it, that you, you know, how I have um, guidelines on how I want the logo to be used. You know, if it's on a white background, then I want to use the orange logo. I don't want the logo to be on top of a picture. Um, you know, I, I'd want, want it to remain consistent. consistent. Um, you know, we did that fun um, exercise beforehand of logos. And I, I mean, before you even saw some of those, you were yelling out, you know, what it was. So, I mean, those logos of Nike or uh, Mercedes, you know, those are very well recognized that you didn't even have to have multiple choice. You knew what they were. Um, you know, the golden arches. I mean, I'll never forget when my daughter was like two or three. When she saw um, the golden arches, she knew it was McDonald's and she knew that she got a Happy Meal at McDonald's. So, I mean, you know, we are drilled with these, uh, these brands in our head at a very young age. Um, also, um, to be able to help set yourself apart of the product, think about like packaging. Um, you know, think about when you get your iPad or your iPhone and how it's packaged, just simple. Completely simple, the limit, limited amount of packaging. But it's cool, isn't it? You know how, I don't know, it's just unique, I guess. Um, you know, think about whenever you go and get a box of tissues. You know, there are different um, designs. You know, that, that one isn't the traditional one for a school probably because, uh, like at least in my office, it's just like a gray box. So, you know, whoever picked out that box of tissues might like green. Um, you know, whenever you pick out your, t your tissues for your room, you know, probably not going to get one um, that you're probably going to get one that matches your room. So if you just think about the, the product, um, you know, whether it be the traditional box or, you know, sometimes they have like the oval shaped ones. They have ones for your vehicle, for convenience or, or for your purse. Um, so, I mean, obviously Kleenex is, is, is trying to make sure that they, they um, tap on each person and how they're going to use it. Um, the biggest thing I think, like I said, is, um, is keeping it consistent though. Uh, as you can tell here with uh, Coca-Cola, you know, throughout the years, starting in 1886, um, you know, through, through today, I mean, pretty much the logo has stayed the same, right? I mean, if you only saw like the, the top line, you would know what it was. <laughs> I mean, I don't, maybe they didn't have uh, color printers till, <laughs> until the 50s, so then it changed. changed. But the font stayed the same, the color stayed the same. Um, you know, when you, th when you think about uh, like watching an older movie and you see like a Mountain Dew can or a Doritos bag, like, I mean, do you guys ever, ever notice that, oh, that's an older, older version of, of that. You know, they can tell this movie's from the 80s. You guys weren't even born in the 80s, but, um, you know, <laughs> you guys can, you can tell that things have evolved, but you still recognize that it's Doritos or that it's Mountain Dew. Um, so we, we kind of already talked about um, or when you guys went through and we did, they had like the different mascots. The mascots are part of the brain too, or part of the brand too. The Pillsbury, Bill, Pillsbury Doughboy, you know, he's, he's part of the brand. You guys thought of him immediately. Um, Mr. Clean, you know, you guys, when I say Mr. Clean, you probably, the, his image just popped in your head, right? You guys know who that is, right? <laughs> uh, what about Flo? Who's Flo? Progressive. Yeah. So see, that's part of their brand. You know, she definitely is, is uh, part of their brand. Piggy Banks, does anybody know who that is? Piggy, <laughs> Piggy Banks. It, that's Via's mascot <laughs> for, the, for the kids club. But you know, I bet the kids would know if you guys were a little bit younger, then you might, you'd probably know who Piggy is. <laughs> um, so also like with, um, with, with the product um, convenience. So like I know whenever, um, Whenever you go out to the checkout at Walmart, they always have those little Nutella cups. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? This like little Nutella, and it has a little bit of Nutella, and then has the the sticks that go with it, so you can dip it. How many of you guys ever bought any of those? Nobody. Okay, good. Okay. It's just like this, like it. Uh, it's uh, just a small Nutella, like the chocolate, and then it has like the little the sticks that you dip it in. Well, you can easily buy uh, buy the sticks throughout or in the store, and then you can buy the Nutella a Nutella bottle, and it'll probably be you know, like let's say five dollars, and you can de you can get tons of uses out of that. But that little little container, did you when you bought that? Did you use it for your lunch or just wanted it for a snack? Yeah, for lunch. yeah so convenience. Um, I mean, that, that you definitely have to think about that when you're you have the packaging too. Um, you know, I had mentioned with Kleenexes. You know, the ones for your 
for your purse. You know, it's a lot easier to throw uh, one of those little travel sides in your in your purse than it is a whole box. <laughs> you know, obviously you have to think about, about convenience when you're packaging your brand too. And of course, price. The key to uh, pricing your product is making sure that it's not too high so that no one buys it, but not too low so that people think that it's uh, maybe not worthy of being purchased or, or chintzy. Um, you know, people are, are they're, they are willing to pay for, for something that they find value in. Uh, they're definitely willing to pay for convenience. Have you guys been to uh, a hotel where they have a mini bar? And not, like not, I guess, I don't know what it's called whenever there's not actually alcohol in it, but like where there's peanut M&Ms and a bottle of water. A happy hour? Like, well, like, like in the hotel, like in the r little refrigerator. Oh, yeah. Fridge. The mini fridge. Yeah, they do have alcohol in it too, but you guys aren't buying that. But like, they sometimes have like peanuts and pop and like, do you guys know what I'm talking about and how much, how much those cost? I mean, like a bag of peanut M&Ms is like $4 inside one of those things or a bottle of water is $3 versus, you know, if you go to Walmart, you can get it for under a dollar. But it's the convenience. You're laying in bed, you know, out on, on a trip or on vacation, and the bag of peanut M&Ms is just staring you in the face, and you're like, oh, it's just $4. <laughs> you got to enjoy every single one of those. So that's what I'm saying with, with convenience. Um, or like an experience. Have you guys ever been to, like, uh, the Rainforest Cafe? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's food like you would get at... Um, like Texas Roadhouse or Applebee's or something like that, right? But the prices are definitely more because of the experience that you're getting. You know, you're seeing the the beautiful fish in the aquarium or hearing the elephants, elephants make noise, and uh, so I mean, you're definitely paying for the for the experience when you go to someplace like that. So just making sure that, like I said, and the biggest thing is probably with the, um, with the price is checking to see what the competition has. You know, maybe you're able to price a little bit higher because you f feel like you offer, offer um, something more than, than the competition. Um, you know, with, with a credit union, every week we, um, we get a rate sheet that shows what other rates of financial institutions for loans and for savings in the area is. And I mean, that's, that's important for us. We want to be competitive. Um, you know, that's definitely one of, our, one of our goals. So we have to, to consistently be pricing the competition. And even um, when I say that, you know, I mean, I still, I still look to see what other places in the, in the United States are doing too, just to make sure that we, you know, what are, what are our members looking at as a possibility, um, you know, as far as maybe if it's mobile banking or a free ATM, you know, we want to make sure we stay competitive. The other P is place. Um, so, you know, obviously knowing if you are gonna manufacture a product and then send it to a mass, a mass um, retailer to distribute, or are you gonna have your own storefront where you're gonna sell it? Um, you know, if you have your own storefront, where is it gonna be in a high traffic area? You know, like the bypass. Do you think that like uh, renting a building on the bypass is cheaper or more expensive than one, um, you know, like on this on the street we're on now, or down by the splash house. The bypass, you think it'd be more expensive? Yeah, because there's there's more eyes um, that you know that that would see it, more traffic that goes by. Um, even billboards, you know, if there, a billboard on bypass is going to be more expensive than a billboard on Adam Street because the traffic there's more traffic. Um, I mean, think about like a, a rummage sale. Has anybody ever, ever had a rummage sale at their house? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whenever you've had a rummage sale, did, was like your whole neighborhood having one or did you, did you just, yeah. So your whole neighborhood was? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So obviously there's, there's probably some kind of marketing that went into that rummage sale. So, you know, maybe it was in the newspaper, uh, maybe your, your uh, neighborhood decided to, to market it as a whole versus, you know, if you, if you don't live in a high traffic area, if you just had a rummage sale, then the traffic probably wouldn't be there and you wouldn't have as much business versus if uh, it's in a high trafficked area or if um, there's a lot of business going on versus like what I mean is a lot of rummage sales. So I mean that's definitely important. Um, the location that, that you choose and how you distribute it. Uh, the other one is promotion. Uh, we kind of talked about you know the different um, different options for promoting your product uh, depending on your um, your target market. Uh, one thing 
with you know where it talks about um, newspapers or you know the QR codes, any kind of marketing that you can use that can track um, is definitely your to your benefit. Uh, obviously, email marketing just became a, uh, a lot more popular in the last five to ten years. Um, and I, personally, as a marketer, I love it because I know that somebody opened the email. I can see that they clicked on something, and what they clicked on when they opened my email. I can see uh, where I can't necessarily see what they did when they went to the extra page, but you know, I, I th those are things that I can see. Versus if I send them a postcard, I can't. I don't know who saw it. I don't know if the in if I sent it to you, I don't know if your parents got the mail and then you they threw it out and you never even saw it in your inbox. I can see that you that you opened it. Well, not maybe you. Whatever email address I sent it to, hopefully it's yours. Uh, so I mean, that's definitely something to consider. Um, and like I said, even if you do, uh, with the QR codes, you can track those, but um, even if you do some kind of coupon, so then you know that it's coming back to you, so you, then you can track that. Okay, so, um, you know, I mentioned the Great Deals Magazine. That's some place that we've advertised the last couple of years. Well, I put a coupon in there for a, a quarter percent off of a loan rate. Now, obviously, not everybody's going to use that because not everybody is in the market for a car. But that um, mailing piece goes to 20,000 homes, and we only got one back. <laughs> so do you think I'm gonna use that uh, next year in my budget as a marketing avenue? <laughs> Probably not. She doesn't know that yet, so don't tell her. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I wouldn't have known that. We've used it for two years, and I'm assuming that, you know, that that's just another, another place for me to market, um, get more eyes on it. Uh, but you know, it's not, it's not cheap either, so I do have to consider that uh, if it, may, it may not be working. Um, I personally haven't done any of the, the Facebook or the social media campaigns, but you know, um, I've heard that they're very, you know, they're, they're fairly inexpensive and it's even a way to get your brand, um, you know, like when you're scrolling through Facebook, the ads on the, on the right hand side, they're, if you don't uh, notice now, whenever you go to, because it's probably things, pages that you've gone to, excuse me, before, or something that you would be interested in because, um, marketers can say they want you know, I want teens. I want teens that um, are interested in sports. So, you know, if you are on a ball team or, you know, like a athletic page, then it's gonna know that. Like, it's really kind of weird how, <laughs> how detailed the marketing can be. But um, when you think about, they know everything about me. I was, I was like Googling, um, Googling something on, you know, just in on my computer. And then the next page I went to, there was all these Amazon ads and like the picture of what I was Googling was all over. <laughs> like saying Amazon sells the product that I just Googled. So, I mean, that's like the cashing your cookies. But I mean, that's a great strategy for Amazon because they know that you, you know, that you were looking for that product and maybe you did bought it already, maybe you didn't, but they're right, it's right there in your face. Um, with, with coupons, uh, coupons and free samples, uh, did you guys hear the article about uh, the attorney here in Marion who um, got in trouble for not wearing socks? And, uh, yeah. Okay. So do you, did you hear what happened after that? Yeah. Gold Toes sold, sent him socks. So Gold Toes is a sock brand. They put it on their Facebook page, um, you know, the article about him getting in trouble for not wearing socks and asked the question. Who should, who should I send, or what, what's your favorite pair of socks? Who do, uh, which pair do you think that we should send to him? So they sent him like nine different pairs of socks, like some stylish ones, some comfortable ones. But what a great marketing strategy. You know, they know this guy doesn't like socks. And I mean, in the article he was quoted that he, they weren't comfortable for him. So now they're giving him free samples of socks. And if he likes one of them, he's probably gonna buy them again, isn't he? Yeah. So obviously you can't do that for everybody, but then I mean, they definitely saw the opportunity and took advantage of it. Um, with movie stars, you know, one of the options is to have a celebrity. They're very expensive, so you're probably not going to do that. But um, you know, like Vera Bradley, you know, they have they send free products to shows, um, and then just hope that the the product appears on TV. I mean, it's not necessarily free advertising because they sent a free pro or sent a product that they had to manufacture, but it's a lot cheaper than buying a commercial. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, so I mean, you know, trying to be creative with the ways that you that you uh, 
you advertise. Um, we had uh, ATMs, the new ATMs that we um, put up a couple years ago. And so to promote that, that we had these new ATMs, we had this a little test your luck campaign. And we did it, uh, luckily our ATMs went up around St. Patrick's Day. So St. Patrick's Day weekend we did um, where we put a couple, 50, or not a couple, quite a few $50 bills in the replace of the 20. So when you went through the ATM and you wanted 50 bucks or $60, you might've gotten two 20s and a 50 or you might have got your three, three 20s. But um, so it was just something that we did, you know, hoping to get the increase of traffic of the ATM, the awareness of the location. Uh, some people knew about the promotion. They were super excited. Some people uh, on Tuesday when we were open came in or called or emailed us and said, um, something happened. I got $50 instead of 20. Did that come out of my account like that? <laughs> so, but no matter what, it got, it got a buzz and it asked, asked questions and how good would it make you feel if you went to an ATM to get 20 bucks and got 50? You probably remember us and, <laughs> and uh, be happy that you had an extra 30 bucks to blow. <laughs> um, so like I said, just kind of being creative. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen like our, our uh, Via, Via car that we've wrapped. Um, you know, that idea came from, you know, we have billboards up, which billboards are super expensive if you start um, pricing those. But you know, if you can buy a car for you know, $25,000 and wrap it up for 5,000 and you think about, you know, oh, for five years, that's only $6,000 a year in advertising, it's even cheaper than billboards and the car has gone on for over six years now. So, you know, as far as marketing, you know, it's not in one static location. It, you know, travels around throughout, throughout all the counties. Um, and when it is one static location, then people can drive by it. Um, plus, it can use, be used to haul things, so it's it's a multiple locate or multiple uses. So, trying to be creative on what you um, you know how you advertise. Um, also, um, a business website. What's the first thing you guys do whenever you go? To, you think of something or want to find something? You you probably go to a website or try to Google it try to find a website that's that's how important it is to have a business website have you guys ever went to look for something and they didn't have a website and then you just lost interest um, yeah. yeah so are you guys gonna make a website for your product <laughs> all right <laughs> there is a really simple simple um, tools to to make websites I am by no means a web designer and I was able to make one for community career fair and it was like eight dollars a year so um, if you want to show up your, your competition, make a website. <laughs> um, trade shows, um, you know, th that's a great way to expose your business as well. Get, get it out in the community. Um, people love to go to trade show fairs because they know that they're going to get free stuff. <laughs> so you have to give out free stuff, but it will be worth it. Um, next we'll kind of show, uh, you know, these are some just different options uh, or examples of promotions. Um, I was going to show a couple, a couple commercials. Do I just like click on to the... Uh, obviously, you know, whenever you see commercials, you'll, you'll notice, or even, you know, these are just advertising. They, they try to play on your, your emotions. So, um, you know, this one, scary, right? Or if you like snakes, maybe cool. <laughs> so they're playing, uh, playing on your emotions. Um, take off $10 with a purchase of $40. You know, that's what I was talking about with um, trying, to, trying to get you back into the store. But also, you know, think that gives you a good feeling because you're going to save money. But there, there are a couple uh, ads that I, that I picked out. Um, one of them is an Allstate commercial. You guys have probably seen Mayhem. Yeah, so that's a really cool way um, for Allstate to kind of promote that, um, you know, what are they going to, what are they going to do for the, or what can happen for the unexpected. So let's watch this one. I'm the world's worst cleaning lady. <laughs> Cleanliness was supposed to be my little name, but then my parents settled on Janet. Now, I'm here in your home having a pretty spectacular Tuesday, but I don't notice the loose rug at the top of your stairs, and that's about to become an issue for me. As you've got the wrong home, his arm, my like <laughs> medical bills could get expensive. So get all state. Where did you tell Keith you protected from man? Like man. Good hands, good home. Make sure you have the right home protection. Talk to an all state agent. Okay, so <laughs> that played on your motion, it's funny, right? So you guys aren't homeowners yet. 
Um, but as a homeowner who may have a cleaning lady, which I don't, but if I did, you know, I may never have thought of, oh my gosh, what if my cleaning lady would fall down the stairs? You know, would my insurance cover that? So who do you think that they're trying to target? Homeowners. Homeowners, yep. And, uh, you know, our, um, traditionally, Allstate targeted to, um, more, more of the older generation who maybe wasn't as worried about price, you know, with like Geico. Uh, you know, obviously that's all about price. Um, you know, this, they never mentioned how much it costs or anything like that through that. It was just more like, is it covered? Uh, you know, same thing kind of um, Farm Bureau sort of used the same tactic here lately with, you know, random questions that are up in the air. Like, uh, yeah, they ask you like, I can't even think of an example right now. Yeah, I landed on your home. Would you be covered? Well, you don't want to knock on wood and hope. You want to check to see your policy to see. Uh, it would be interesting to know how many phone calls they get, they get about random things like that. But uh, so you know, those are things that do happen, and you know, you think you're covered, but are you? So then it makes you think: Should I check my coverage? Um, so that's that's one example. Uh, another one is uh, Oldsmobile. This is one of my favorite ones. <laughs> or Volkswagen. I mean, not Oldsmobile. Forgot to take your mask off, right? We should probably get out of here. Introducing the all new Beetle Convertible. Now every day is a top down day. That's the power of German engineering. <laughs> Okay, so with Volkswagen, when they first introduced the Volkswagen Beetle, or reintroduced it, you can't kind of think about what it looked like. It was, you know, really round. It had like a vase for flowers. So like, who were they targeting whenever the, the Beetle first came out? Yeah. And, but now they've changed, they changed the look of the car. Um, they, obviously this commercial was not targeting to, to young girls or, you know, young women. Um, it's targeting to men. Uh, so that once they, you know, the, so what they did is they changed their product, the look of their product, and then intentionally changed their their marketing to to target men. Uh, so that that definitely wasn't feminine. It was it was funny. So you know, a man's gonna. Well, I think women think it's funny too. But you know, it's and we don't. It's not a girl's hair blown in the wind as far as you know the convertible. And men can have a convertible too. So they've intentional, you know, intentionally marketed that. Um, <laughs> So we've seen one that markets, markets a service. Uh, we've seen one that markets a product. This one's kind of just like a public service uh, announcement that definitely plays with your emotions too. Uh, No, not at all. Are you not paying attention? Are you texting? I was just checking in with my mom. I was telling her that I thought we'd be home by six. It's okay. There's enough time. Just pay attention. I'm not even halfway through my text. There's no way. I'm not even going to look up. My babies are in the car. You have to pay attention. It's just supposed to be a quick text. I'm so sorry. So that's obviously an emotional getter one. Uh, you know, obviously all the text and driving ones or, you know, even ones where they t talk about wearing your seatbelt, the public announcements. You know, those are obviously intended to scare you so that you do not text and drive. You do not wear your, or you do wear your seatbelt uh, because it, you know, it can happen to anybody. Uh, there is, I didn't, I didn't show it because it was an alcohol one, but there is a really cute one that Budweiser has, right, has going on right now. It's about a little dog who is a puppy and the guy, yeah, that's so sweet. And you like watch the guy grow up and then, 
you know, you know, see the guy going out partying with his friends and the dog sitting there whining and crying the whole time. But then, and then there's like some word about, um, you know, you know, not, not driving while drinking because you have friends waiting for you. And then the guy comes back and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. You know, I, um, I should have just shown it. I'm telling the whole thing. Uh, he said, you know, I decided to stay at a friend's house because I had too much to drink. And, but, it, you know, that's more, you know, that's definitely played on your emotions of, you know, even if you don't have kids or you don't have a, a spouse, you have your animals that are waiting for you too. Or someone, you know, friends and family do care about you. So making sure you make the right choices. But so, like I said, you know, obviously, you know, there's there's d deep emotions. And I'm not saying, uh, you know, that for your products, you have to have super deep emotions. But, you know, uh, with the Aaron one, you know, I can definitely see a good marketing campaign on that. That could that could, um, you know, you could reach different people, um, especially with, you know, the older one. So if you if you go to the senior center and you promote that you have this Aaron service, um, you know, that that promotion that you're going to do, that commercial, those posters, those are going to look different than the ones that you would maybe take to Starbucks for the, you know, the busy families or, um, you know, the busy person going through drive up somewhere. Um, so, you know, just, just think about who your audience is and the ways that you can creatively uh, market to them because you don't, you don't want to all just use all mass media. You want to creatively do it. Uh, you know, obviously Google's your best friend. Make sure that you use that to, you know, think of different um, free, free options. Um, you know, social media is definitely, especially if you have a, a younger audience. Even older people do use use uh, social media. They just may not be as likely to take surveys and uh, click on things as much. But as far as just awareness, do you guys have any questions? Did I scare you guys? Nobody's gonna text and drive again. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I like seriously almost started bawling when I saw that. <laughs> so no questions? All right. <laughs> so go ahead and um, upload the different parts of your business plan. Start thinking about your marketing for your product or service. Um, let us know if you have any questions.